Well, good afternoon, everyone. So I hope everyone's week is going well. We're going to talk about three mistakes to avoid when looking at colleges and also one secret inside tip that we give every family who works with us. We're going to share it with you today. So <clears throat> I find that most people, when they decide to look at colleges, um, parents are often waiting for their child to make that decision. Like, where should we go? And kids are kind of trying to feel it out. Often they're like, mm, well, my friend is going here, let's go there. And that's not a bad place to start, but you wanna make sure the school really has what your child's looking for in the way of a major, in the type of activities, and think outside of you know, just what they're going to study or just the you know, Big Ten football scene or something like that. What other things are they involved in at home that they'll want to do at school so that it feels like home to them? And we'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. So when you're thinking about looking at schools, uh, number one, I always encourage families to look sooner rather than later. We don't need to wait till junior year to start thinking about this. When you're on vacation, when you're going to visit family over the holidays, it's a great time to start looking at college campuses. Maybe you're not taking an official visit, but you're driving through and seeing what your child likes. Oh, I like this style of architecture. Oh my gosh, this place looks too depressing. Comments like that will help guide future visits. So really important for you to, you know, start looking around, seeing what's available, um, what kind of interests they have so that you can spend your time wisely. So once you decide to look at schools and you're in your junior year in particular, you definitely want to be sure that you schedule admission tours. Don't just walk around a campus on your own and call it a day. That's okay when you're initially, you know, just taking some time to get a feel for what your student wants. But if you're looking seriously at a school, you need to set up that admission tour for a couple reasons. First, colleges love to see demonstrated interest. They want to know that you've taken the time to really look at their school. And when you take an official visit through the admission office scheduled and have that tour, they know that you're really serious about their school. And let me tell you, when they're reviewing applications, they know whether you have visited or not. Now during COVID, a lot of people couldn't visit and that's when admissions got really creative and they set up admission visits via Zoom, where you weren't just watching the video tour that's on their website, but instead you were actually getting to sit in on a meeting and get questions answered. And that's really important to demonstrate that interest. So make sure you schedule a tour, an actual real tour, once you know that you're interested in looking at a school. Um, you also want to have a conversation with admissions. Don't just get led around the campus by the 19-year-old tour guide. That's great, but let's face it. They know about their major. They know about the classes they're in. They know about the buildings where their major is typically housed, but they're not going to know specifics for you. So you want to make sure that you also set up an actual visit with someone in admissions. You, before you go, go onto their website and play with the financial aid calculator. Every college has one available on their website. Play with that to see what kind of information they give you on their total cost of attendance, what type of merit money you're likely to receive, what any, any additional monies you're likely to receive. And then when you have your visit with them, talk to them about those numbers. Is it something that's doable for you? Do you feel like your child would need more money to make it a, a actual reality for your family? Ask them what other opportunities they have. Really have that discussion on what other merit money your child can earn or what other grants, other options there are. Um, some schools are getting really creative with that, so it's definitely worth the conversation before you're even applying to make sure, you know, when your child's doing all this work for a school, the worst thing to happen, and trust me, I've seen it before, a child gets admitted to a school that's really high on their list, and then the family says, gosh, we really can't afford this. So you want to have these conversations earlier. Um, 
definitely important that you are demonstrating that interest, talking to admissions, really get to know them and ask a, a lot of different things. The second thing is make sure you have a list of questions. Your child needs to have a list of questions. You're not going to college. Your child is. Admissions wants to know that they would be admitting the student and not the entire family. In other words, they really don't want the idea of entertaining a helicopter parent throughout the entire process. So your kid needs to have questions ready. They should be asking questions about their major. They should be asking questions about other activities they've enjoyed. So if they have always volunteered at your local animal shelter, um, is there an animal shelter nearby? Is there a pause for cause club at the school so that you can get involved with other people who are really interested in you know, animal welfare and so forth? Um, is there a particular activity? Maybe your child has taken karate for years. Um, do they offer that on campus? Is there a karate club? Do they have the ability to do things that they've always enjoyed? Uh, most schools, have well over 200 clubs and organizations. But you wanna make sure they have clubs and organizations that your child's interested in. Um, maybe they've recently demonstrated, I've had several students um, who have belonged to an environmental science club in their school, um, in their high school, and they're looking for that same opportunity in college. It's something that's important to them, even if they're not studying it. So do they, does the schools, do the schools that they're looking at have that available because they're going to feel at home then. So that's an important thing to do. Um, what else is your child interested in being involved in? They're going to go to class for 15 hours a week. Yes, 15 hours a week. The other 168 hours, sure, there's going to be studying. There's going to be social time. But there's also time for them to get involved because grad schools or an employer are going to want to see that involvement. Let's make sure that the schools you're looking at have things available your child's going to be interested in. And so really kind of pushing your child to think about what it is they'd like to do in their spare time and making sure that those, those possibilities exist. Um, super important. You also want to ask about graduation rates. While they're published on schools' websites, it's kind of deceiving. The government only requires them to publish graduation rates for six-year graduation. So they list how many kids graduated within six years. Now, I don't know about you, but as a parent, I wanted my kids on a four-year plan. I wanted to know that they could get in and out in four years, incur the least amount of debt possible, and really have the best opportunities. So when you're talking about graduation rates, you have to be very specific and ask what their four-year graduation rates are because often they're not published. If they have a fairly low four-year graduation rate, there, there could be very reasonable factors that, inv that go into that. A lot of times urban schools that have a lot of commuters will graduate at a much lower percentage in that four-year time frame because often commuters are also working. So it deters them maybe from taking a full schedule. Maybe they're a full schedule this semester, but next semester they're not. So that is a realistic factor. However, you wanna make sure it's not because kids are getting locked out of classes. I hear complaints from kids from a lot of different schools where they tried to schedule a class they need to take in the fall so they can take the second version of it in the spring and they can't get it. And it's not offered during the spring so they're pushed back an entire year. So you wanna make sure that if there's any issues with graduation rates, it's not because kids can't get their classes scheduled. And ask that question. Um, colleges are aware this is a problem, and so you know it, it, it's interesting to hear what the school gives you for that lower graduation rate or when discussing scheduling classes, how that works. A lot of schools, if you're in an honors program, you get the first chance to schedule, which is kind of a good reason to get into an honors program at a bigger school where scheduling could become an issue. Um, just something for you to think about going forward. 
something that we have our students do every single time they visit is to immediately when they get in the car, not discuss anything. And instead, type like a whole list of notes about it. And we do this for two reasons. Often, you know, parents are looking at the school and hearing the information from their lens of experiences. Students are looking at it from a completely different perspective. So when parents and students start talking about it on the way home, they might, you know, a kid might say, oh, I really like that they said X, Y, Z. And the parent might go, mm, I don't think that's what they meant. I think it's more this way. And all of a sudden the kid's impression starts to become watered down, whether it was good or bad. It starts to change, like to just kinda, yeah, it was okay. So instead I encourage students to jot down a ton of notes in their phone what they liked, what they didn't like, what they heard that was impressive to them, what they heard that they just assumed everyone would have. And now they've got to start thinking, boy, maybe I should be asking about this at other schools. So you want to have them take these notes. And maybe even more important than being able to keep all of their visits straight and who had what and who said what is the fact that a lot of schools today ask for an essay. Why? us. Why Tulane? Why University of Michigan? Why Harvard? Why Yale? Why this school? Let me tell you, we are able to write such great essays when students have that whole list. They can go in, they can talk about all of those things, and you know, we can encourage what is great information for them to put in there, and what mm, Maybe not so much, even though they did note it. But the more they have in those notes, the better it's going to display the fact, hey, I was there. I saw it firsthand. I loved this, this, and this. Because words like beautiful campus, um, excellent professors, like those are just why bother writing it? Because you could put any college's name in there. But if you start talking about that one specific tree that's 180 years old in the center of campus where they do meetups and things like that, now I know you've been there. So very important that they take really, really good notes and do it before they start talking about it. Because again, the sooner they do it, the less likely it is to get watered down, the less likely they are to forget things. So you really wanna have them do that right away and don't contribute to that conversation, mom and dad. It has to be from them. So just let them do their thing, okay? Um, I've seen text messages that are literally like you're scrolling for pages on their phone. Um, and that's a great tool later. And then we promised you, and it, so those are the three things we really want to talk about. So number one, don't just do unguided walk around on your own or visit a friend. You need to do official admission tours, all right, so that you have that demonstrated interest. Make an appointment to speak with admissions. Talk about the money piece. Talk about other questions. Find out about graduation rates. You wanna make sure your child has questions written down. They wanna come prepared. This is a big decision. Minimum $100,000 at most schools today for a four-year degree. Your child needs to have an investment in this by thinking out some questions. What's important to them? What kind of activities do they wanna participate in otherwise? And then the third point is always take notes when you leave so it doesn't get muddied up. If you, if you take a three-day trip and you look at six schools in three days, I guarantee two weeks later, you're unsure of, wait, which school was that? Oh, wait, what school did they say this? So make sure you're taking really good notes. So in addition to those three things, we wanna make sure the most important thing I can suggest, and this is a game changer for students, I can tell you 100%. Um, you wanna make sure that you schedule a visit. So you're going to contact admissions, you're gonna schedule your tour, and then you're going to contact them again. And you're gonna say, we really want to add a visit with the department chair for the biology department, the business college, whatever area your child plans to study in. You wanna make sure you get that visit in. I'm gonna give you a, a super great reason why this is so important and it's super specific 
When my son was thinking about college, he was planning pre-med. My daughter had just gotten into vet school. And so she, you know, she had attended an undergrad, studied biology as a pre-vet, and she got right into Ohio State Vet School first try, which is kind of a big deal. So my son said, well, I'll just go where she went. It was good enough to get her into Ohio State Vet School. It'll be good enough to get me into med school. And I'm like, ah, oh, not the right school for you. Oh, what do you mean it's not the right school for me? It was good enough for her. It's, it should be good enough for me. And I said, you're two different kids. we got to find the right fit for you. So we looked at it, and I, I don't think he really felt any kind of bond with the head of the biology department, even though my daughter had loved her. Um, we went to another school and we did the tour first. And as we're walking around the campus, my son's like, oh my gosh, this is great. And, oh, mom, look at this. And oh, mom, did you hear this? And he's super excited. Like he would have signed on the dotted line after that tour. We had a great tour guide, makes a big difference. And then we met the head of biology and his entire office was lined with plastic boxes. And inside the plastic boxes were bugs because he was an entomologist, which is part of biology, but not the part my son was interested in. So then we really drilled down. You know, how much money have you put in a cadaver lab? Mm, none. Do you hold MCAT prep classes? Mm, no. Do you have any contacts with local medical schools or even any medical schools? Mm, no. Not the right school for my kid. Because let's face it, college is just the vehicle to get you to that career. And if it's not going to get you there, it doesn't matter how much you love the campus. It's not the right place. So super important to meet with that head of the department. And you'll be shocked. Your child will be shocked. From one school to another to another, their focus is, they can have the exact same names for the major. The focus can be completely different. And you want to find that focus that is going to best suit your child. Because at the end of the day, that is the most important piece of college. And this is the step most people never do. And when we hear kids contact us and say, um, hey, I know you helped my friend get into college. Um, I'm already in college thinking about transferring. Is that something you could help me with? Yes, it is. But the number one reason is because they didn't check it out. They didn't know what they were getting into. They thought it was one thing and it turned out to be something different. And so now they have to take time, money, the stress and aggravation of applying all over again, finding the right school. So don't let that happen to you and your child. Make sure they make that visit. And I can tell you too, our students who do this, it's amazing how many of them will contact me at the beginning of their freshman year. Oh my gosh, you wouldn't believe it. I was walking across the campus and I saw the head of the department and he remembered me. He stopped and talked to me. Yeah, because not many kids do this. And you know, the heads of departments, they're tasked with retention within their department. Most schools kind of grade them on that. And so they want to retain students. So if it's not a good fit for you, they don't want you to show up anyways. So they'd rather know that up front or have the opportunity to let you know it's probably not a good fit. So definitely you want to have questions for the head of the department. As you talk with people, you're going to hear things you like, things you don't. At your next visit to another school, ask, do they have the same things that you like? Ask about the things you don't like to make sure that's not part of their program. It'll make a big difference. And your child, when they show up to school, will feel so much more prepared because they're gonna have a greater understanding of what they're getting into, who's running the department, what type of support they have for the students. They're gonna feel a lot better adjusting to college in that way. And somebody just asked a question, is it too late to do tours of kids a senior? We haven't done many in person. Hey, completely understand. No, it's not too late. Actually, I often recommend in February or March when classes are fully in session before you make your final decision. If you've got it narrowed down to two or three schools to which you've been accepted, by all means, schedule visits. Go and see those schools so that as you're making that final decision, again, you have that comfort level. I'm making the best choice. I know this is the right school for me. I'm positive this is where I wanna go because I really looked at it. And there's no kind of nagging 
you know, thing in the back of their head, like, oh, maybe I should have went to this other school when they hit a hard class or when they have a professor they hate. So, you know, taking all of those precautionary steps to make sure they're in the right place is really going to help them to be in the right place. But also, you know, they're gonna hit rough patches throughout college, but they're gonna know they're still in the right place even when a class is super difficult, a professor's just really not a good teacher or, you know, whatever it is that they encounter. They'll really feel like, hey, this is just temporary. I know I'm in the right place. It's just a small little piece of it. So that is what I can tell you. And yeah, by all means, go back and visit even after you have your acceptances. But before you make that final decision, it's really going to put your mind at ease that you guys are in the right place. And it's really going to help your kid make that transition, knowing they're in the right place. They've met people. They know what to expect. They know what kind of support they'll have. So if you found this helpful and you just heard some things you didn't know that you should be doing, I really encourage you to schedule a consultation. Consultations are free. Schedule a consultation because what else are you missing? We're here to help. We wanna help you get on the right track, make sure that your child has the best experience possible at the least expensive cost. So uh, feel free to drop a message down below if you'd like a link to schedule a consultation. And I look forward to talking to you all and I hope that everybody got something out of this. Please put a thumbs up or a heart if you did get something out of this. I hope it was helpful. Talk to you guys soon. Have a great rest of your day.